ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد اخواني السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته i'd like to welcome you brothers and sisters to this the fourth episode of diaries of an exorcist before we go into mentioning any cases today uh, i want to share with you something that happened with me today and subhanallah it raises a few questions but it also i think it needs addressing as well um bi idnillah ta'ala so today was the release date of or the release day of the second video in the series so the second video was released today um and in that series sorry in that video i mentioned uh briefly about uh poking and beating the jinn not beating the person but beating the jinn um and when this video came out alhamdulillah uh, you brothers and sisters have probably seen it i was just going about my daily routine today and somebody from amongst my contacts on my phone so somebody who i normally speak to uh a brother who i normally speak to he contact me contacted me on whatsapp and he said to me on whatsapp you think you're a bad man and this is not the character of the brother at all um and i said akhi uh, what do you mean um and he said and he said you think you're bad uh, bad as in uh you think you're good um I, and i was what are you referring to and he goes you'll see don't think that you're too bad and he said you're lost you're lost it clicked with me at this stage ikhwani that i'm not talking to the brother i'm talking to a jinn i'm talking to the jinn so i actually said on this whatsapp conversation i said ah jinn what's your name uh and the the jinn began to abuse me or be become very abusive over the whatsapp over whatsapp i'm having a conversation with this jinn ikhwani subhanallah he was abusing 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 and then i would send to him ayahs of the quran via whatsapp so uh, you know we have on our smartphones alhamdulillah we have the apps which have the quran on there so i would take this app and i would copy the ayat uh, two or three different ayat and then i would paste them into the whatsapp conversation and i would send it and he went quiet i said big man why have you gone quiet why have you gone quiet um and he started again becoming abusive uh and he started saying what are you talking about it's me it's me to try and confuse me and make me think that i was talking to the brother himself it's me it's me what are you talking about you've lost your mind you're confused i said okay i'm confused i'm ringing you now you tell me i'm confused over the phone so i rang this person and he cut me off he didn't answer the phone i said why are you being a coward for very easy to type let's have a one to one conversation like men uh and he said no i'm busy i'm busy i said no answer your phone you coward i said what's your name he said what's your name i said why are you being a khabith why are you being a piece of filth answer my questions he would just copy what i was saying and paste it back to me so alhamdulillah i i called him again and i said look answer the phone if you're not afraid answer the phone so he answered the phone and it was the brother's voice but he was being it was like he was being in a very cheeky way uh and he was you know he was speaking with a different accent he wasn't he was speaking from, with an accent that's up north but it wasn't quite the way i know this brother to speak so i said listen ittaqillah ittaqillah what's your problem why have you entered into this person what do you have with this person what's the issue here there's nothing wrong he said there's nothing wrong with me you're confused you're lost so i said okay i'm confused i'm lost i said i tell you what just listen for one second and i just said a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem and he cut the phone off 
He cut the phone off. So I called him back. I said, yeah, Jin, what's the issue here? What's the issue here? He said, oh, I'm sorry, my hand slipped. I said, oh, your hand slipped. Okay, no problem. A'udhu billahi minash rajim He cut me off again. So I thought, I'm not going to keep ringing. So uh, the conversation continued over WhatsApp. The conversation continued over WhatsApp. And the jinn was very, very cheeky. He said, oh, it seems that my hand keeps slipping. I said, wow, what a coincidence. And he said, yes, what a coincidence. Ikhwani, the conversation continued. Um, I told the jinn and I was, I was uh, speaking to the jinn. I told him, you're never, you're never going to be successful. You are awliya of shaitan. And, and he was uh, saying to me, oh, you're a big man. You think you're this, you think you're that. I said, look, I don't think I'm anything. We, uh, we are against you shayateen. And we hope to be on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The plot of shaitan is weak, as Allah tells us in the Quran. And la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And I said to him, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shayateen. Anyway, ikhwani, this carried on until suddenly the brother put exclamation marks. And I thought, okay, alhamdulillah, the brother's back now. Alhamdulillah, the brother's back now. So the brother was like, subhanallah, what's going on here? So I rang him. I read the whole conversation out to him. I read the whole conversation out to him. And he was amazed. He said, you know, I've got this bit, but I don't have this bit. I've got this bit, and the, but I don't have this bit. Oh, another thing. The jinn over WhatsApp started um, singing songs, you know, uh, the, 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 the rhythm of the songs. And he mentioned Inspector Gadget for some reason, but he started singing songs. I said, okay, you want to sing songs? I said, I listen to Quran and I sent him an ayah. I sent him uh, Surah Nas. So I sent him that. And I said, do you like it? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. I said, what is it? He said, well, it's whatever you've sent me. I said, no, what is it? He said, it's really, really good. I said, no, what is it? He said, whatever you've sent me. I said, see, you're not even man enough to listen to the Quran. So he didn't listen to the file, he was just mocking and said, yeah, it's lovely. He didn't actually open the file over WhatsApp, subhanAllah. Okay, Ikhwani. So then I spoke to the brother, I read him the whole conversation. He was amazed. He said, I have this bit, but I don't have that bit. I have this bit, but I don't have that bit. And then he said, you know, the funniest thing is when I read your conversation and I noticed that you were saying to me, why don't you answer, you coward? I checked my call logs and I didn't have any calls from you whatsoever. Let alone answered calls, there was no calls from you whatsoever. So what this jinn had done, Ikhwani, before it left, it made the brother delete all of his call logs. Not all of his call logs full stop. All of the call logs that were involving me, the jinn had made the brother delete all of that. So the brother had no idea whatsoever. But alhamdulillah, we had screenshots. I took screenshots of the conversation and proved that, look, this is what's going on. So Ikhwani, I need to mention here, we are not against the jinn full stop. We are not against the jinn full stop. Ayyuhal jinn, we are not against you full stop. However, however, we are among we are against those people who they create mischief in the land. We create we are against those people who are the awliya of shaitan. Not only from amongst the jinn but from amongst the ins as well. So Ayyuhal Jinn, I do not have anything against you as a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are amongst you brothers in Islam and we respect you and we love you as brothers in Islam but the second that mischief is caused the second that people from amongst the human beings are being harmed then Ikhwani we uh, we hate the shayateen for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah we don't claim to do anything by our own power it is all power and all quwa is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone you can take one of us out but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insha'Allah will replace us with two or three people and they will be better Muslims, they will be strong Iraqis and they will be more stern against you with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I just wanted to mention this because it's an amazing incident that took place. But I also wanted to mention we are not against the jinn full stop. They are amongst the, the jinnis, people who are uh, a creation, who are Muslim, they live amongst us. Theirs is their world, as is our world. It's only when the two worlds collide and they are causing problems for us that we then have enmity for them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani, I want to mention another thing. What's the link between technology and the jinn? Again, I've said this in previous issues, in previous episodes. Uh, I don't know. Allah knows best. But it seems that they can use technology. 
it seems that they can use technology and ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but from our experience this is what it seems like Ikhwani once I was uh, I was on some forums because I wanted to see what do the non-Muslims what, what what's written about this issue these supernatural paranormal experiences what's written on it uh, what's written about it on the forums so I took half an hour out and I just browsed some forums and I came across an amazing a story which I wanted to share with you brothers and sisters there was a Muslim sister a Muslim sister on these on these forums and she mentioned how she and her friends had been, play, been playing with the Ouija board had been playing with the Ouija board if one I don't really know what the Ouija board is but it's definitely a way of calling upon the jinn calling upon the shayateen it's an act of, 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 of uh, disbelief if you start asking them things and believing they have uh, ilm al ghaib etc 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 but it's a way of calling upon them and ikhwani it's a way of playing with fire if you play with fire you're going to get burnt don't bother don't go down this route at all so this jinn began to appear to her and, and the jinn started to express his love for her they became very close until the jinn they used to you know call on the play with use these Ouija boards etc and they would call on the jinn they call on the shayateen um, and uh, the, they would leave a pencil there and the, and the pencil would then start writing and so she became very close very intimate with this shaitan with this jinn and um, then the jinn said to her one day with with with, with the writing um, now it's time for me to enter you the time has come so now I basically want my way with you now the time has come for me to in enter into your body and I want to take control of your body she didn't want this she didn't want this and Akhi Ikhwani sorry since then she's been um, suffering with major issues um, I didn't pursue anything in this regard but I just thought I'd share this with you uh, Ikhwani when it comes to these type of things playing with Ouija boards calling upon the spirits visiting this person and that person visiting fortune tellers stay well away save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones Ikhwani be very very careful we only need to stick to the straight path the Sarat al mustaqim and all of these paths are deviations and there's a shaitan on each one of these paths each one of these paths calling the people to that path but each of those paths if one leads to the hellfire so be very very careful okay the case i'm going to mention to you today is an ongoing case it's a case which i find very amusing it's a case which i find very very amusing um not because the the, the person in in question is suffering no may Allah cure this person but simply because of the way that this jinn has conducted herself um, I was called uh, to a house and there was an individual in this house um, and they would and that the family uh, suspected that there was something going on the family suspected that there's something not quite right and subhanallah I Upon hearing what was going on, I thought, okay, this one, you know, it, it warrants further investigation. Let's go down. Um, so, it was a sister. The sister was okay when I walked in, gave salam, everything was okay. There were some family members around, etc., etc. So, we began with the recitation of the Quran. If only before I start, um, another Raqi had gone down. Another Raqi had gone down, um, and, and he had used certain techniques which they had sort of disheartened the family they had disheartened the family um, there was a bit of physical contact going on etc etc and and the family became a little bit disheartened um, disenfranchised with with all of this um, what you have to know if only that each Raqi has his own way of working each person has his own way of working but I want to advise you brothers and sisters if you ever 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 come across somebody who um, claims to be a Raqi he claims to be doing Ruqya according to the Quran and the Sunnah and he comes to your house and he's just sitting like this and you can't hear what he's saying get this person out of your house or the person asks you for a piece of cloth or a piece of piece of clothing or a, a bangle or an earring or a picture anything like this Ikhwani or he asks you for your mother's name or your father's name or, or anything like this he starts asking you dodgy questions Ikhwani get this person out of your house because this person is not doing Rukya according to the Quran and the Sunnah very likely is that this person is a magician but now here and now is not the right time to be speaking about these issues but I just wanted to advise you brothers and sisters Rukya is recitation of Quran seeking of cure 
uh, via the adhkar mentioned in the authentic sunnah and via the recitation of the Quran with some secondary issues such as water or perfumes uh, or scents etc etc Rukya is not ikhwani doing all of these dodgy weird and wonderful things this is not from the Quran it's not from the sunnah so uh, I'm warning you against those people who they seem to be Raqis they might have big beards they might have short thobes but ikhwani we do not look at the appearance of a person rather we should look at their actions and of course you know if they come and they start calling on shaitan and doing all of these questionable things get rid of them ikhwani and call somebody who's only going to recite quran and adhkar from the authentic sunnah ruqya should be transparent ruqya should be transparent so the person should either be reciting quran and he's reciting out loud or he's reciting from a mushaf or he's making dua or he's, uh, or he's making adhkar from the authentic sunnah it should be completely transparent there shouldn't be any question marks hang on a minute why is he doing this why is he doing this why is he doing this Rukya should be transparent from beginning to end and this is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions radiallahu anhum ajma'in so I got there and this sister was um, a little bit disheartened but uh, didn't, do, didn't do too much talking we just started with the uh, recitation of the Quran so when I started with the recitation of the Quran there was nothing for maybe half an hour 45 minutes to an hour I was reciting 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 nothing really was taking place there was no no real issues or anything like that and then I just got a feeling let's let's start talking to this jinn let's start addressing the jinn and and the sister now she started to cry her eyes started to close and um, she started to sort of you know look like there was pain on her on her face from the recitation of the Quran so then I started to address the jinn I started to address the jinn and it turned out that alhamdulillah um, in this on this occasion I was right that I was talking to the jinn and we had a conversation with the jinn if uh, it turned out that the uh, the jinn was a Muslim jinn and her name was Rifa and she had been in the sister for five years and she'd been in the sister because according to Rifa who's the the jinn the name of the jinn according to Rifa she was looking after the sister um, and you know she was uh, giving her moral support and all of this other rubbish Rifat thought that she was doing something good so I explained to Rifat I said Rifat look here's the situation you're a Muslim yes and she said yes I said you know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not just sent to the people he was sent to the jinn as well do you accept that she said yes I said do you accept that by going against his guidance you are going to be uh, earning the anger and the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala she said yes I said look good we are on a common page here then Rifat the family of this sister are enough for her you don't have a right to be in this sister's body I said do you have any uh, proof that gives you the right to you know to enter into this person's body I said look you're oppressing this person does Allah love uh, the oppressors and she said no so I said Rifat look here's the situation I said you need to go you need to leave this sister's body and, and, and I wasn't making Rukya at this stage anymore no more reciting of Quran I said look you need to make uh, you need to uh, leave this sister's body I said go to Saudi Arabia go and perform Umrah and I explained to her that look you know for us as, as human beings we need to get on an airplane we need to fly all the way there we have to stay in hotels it costs us a lot of money I said as for you Eugene you can just move there so quickly there's no airfares there's no hotels. Well, alhamdulillah everything is easy with that was laughing and saying yeah this is, you're, you're right everything is true and I said look Go on Umrah, you know, go and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go and make Hajj and when you come back from Hajj you can get married and you know, you go and live your life, don't ever come back here again. I said, Rifat, does that make sense? You know, you agree with me? She said, yes. So Alhamdulillah, I said, now you need to leave. She said, okay, where do you want me to leave from? I said, leave through her left arm. So the sister's left arm, it raised up and she started screaming or she was like, uh, you know, in a lot of discomfort and pain and she pointed to the window and, and, and then the sister, uh, she fainted. She fainted um, and then we began, uh, then I made the adhan in the sister's ear um, and, and I called her back um, and the sister woke up and said, how do you feel? She, was, she felt good, she felt light. Alhamdulillah, I thought very easy within an hour. Alhamdulillah, Muslim jinn, Muslim sister, she's left now. Everything is all well and good and I'm not needed here anymore. Point of benefit here, Ikhwani, for those brothers and sisters who are going to be doing ruqya, when you make Rukya on a person, say you've made Rukya for two hours now um, and it's come to Fajr time and you need to pray your Fajr prayer, what do you do? What do you do? Because the person here in front of you, they have passed out, they're unconscious 
um, you know, you've been reciting on them and, and many times people lose consciousness when you recite on them, uh, if they're afflicted with jinn or magic, etc. Uh, now what do you do? How do you call this person back? How do you get this person to wake up and wake up in their normal state? It's that person. If only one of the things that you can do is just put your uh, mouth by their ear, make the adhan nice and loud into their ear, take some water, sprinkle the water on them after you've made the adhan and then call them back and 95% of the time, alhamdulillah, uh, according to your intention, I found the intention is, is extremely important when you have the intention, right, I'm making the adhan now to call this person back, alhamdulillah, you make the adhan, you, you have the intention of you know, waking this person up, you sprinkle some water on them, spray some water on them and, and alhamdulillah, the person wakes up. So I left uh, and then a couple of days later, um, I got a phone call for, from, from one of the men of the family and they said, no, she's back. She's back and this is the situation, etc, etc. So I went down again, Ikhwani, I started reciting on Rifa and I told Rifa, I said, look, look. And, and, and Rifa came out again after the recitation. Uh, and I was very gentle the first time, Ikhwani, because, you know, SubhanAllah, Muslim thought, maybe she thought she was doing something good. Maybe she thought she was doing something praiseworthy. Maybe she's just a bit, you know, a bit of a jahil. Maybe she just doesn't understand. So we explained to her and Alhamdulillah, it seems she left. Now the second time I've gone back, I'm not so gentle. I've, th I've told Rifat, I said, Rifat, look, I explained to you last time. Now you're pushing the boundary. Now you're pushing the boundaries. Now you're really pushing it because I've explained to you the first time I was very gentle with you. I respected you. I showed you respect. I showed you a lot of dignity and I gave you the opportunity to leave without any more recitation of Quran. Now though, Rifat, you're really pushing it. Now you're getting us angry, Rifat, because you have no uh, right to be here. So, Ikhwani, uh, I made the Rukya and um, and that was that, you know, I said, okay, look, I need to go now. Um, and, and I was standing outside and I was talking to, the, uh, to, to one of the brothers and the sister was inside uh, in the room and the sister started sticking her tongue out. So, imagine now I'm facing like the road and the brother is looking over my shoulder into the house and Rifa is stood in the wi or the sister is stood in the window and she's making faces she's sticking tongue, her tongue out at her brother she's also putting her fingers up and swearing at him so ikhwani at this stage now i'm thinking this jinn really does have a lot of cheek this jinn really does have a lot of cheek so we walk back in we walk back in and there was no ruqya involved i didn't recite an ayah of the quran I just said to her, and I just addressed Rifat directly. I said, Rifat, let me get one thing straight with you and one thing clear to you. If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. I don't care now. I'm fed up with you. You're causing trouble. You're causing issues, etc., etc., etc. So we sat her down and I made her listen to Quran. She listens to Quran. We told her, you must listen. So she listened. And then I said to her, um, I said to her brother, take your key and just lightly graze it against your sister's foot. So he lightly did this, Rifat started screaming, the jinn was screaming, why are you hurting me? And she was really screaming very, very loud actually. Um, and then I, I said to him, look, you know, take your fingers and just give her a little poke. You know, when you just give somebody like an electric shock and you just put your fingers in their side and they, they, they jump. When we did this, you know, Rifat started again screaming, stop hurting me, you're hurting me, etc, etc, etc. So again, Rifat pretended to leave and then she came back. Um, and, you know, fast forwarding here a little bit now, um, the, the brother, he, he contacted me and he said, look, when, when we as a family, when we want to speak to Rifat, you know, we can speak to her all night long. She just wants to speak for half an hour, one hour, two hours, three hours. She'll speak for ages and ages. We, li we can literally just go up to my sister and just say Rifat and Rifat will come out and she'll start speaking. But when I was there, obviously the uh, Rifat didn't particularly want to come out. She wanted to try and hide and, and pretend like it was her sister, so that she wouldn't, uh, you know, be harmed or, or etc. In any any shape or form, any way, shape or form. So from them speaking to Rifat, they they gathered that Rifat had been there for five years and that she thought it was her house. She lived uh, in a window in the top floor of the house, near a window in the top floor of the house. She she said that the kids were her kids and this was her family. And she was just a little bit deluded. She was lonely. She didn't really have anybody. She said, I don't have anywhere to go. Uh, <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. Um, so I said, okay, let's, let's, let's trick this jinn now. Let's trick this jinn now. What, I'm go what I want to do is I want you to speak to her. 
So speak to her, ikhwani, uh, the akhi, and get the jinn to come out. When you've got the jinn to come out, then call me. When you've got the jinn to come out, come out, then call me. So they went around five minutes before I was due to arrive, and they started speaking to Rifa. And today Rifa was a little bit, a little bit more violent. Subhanallah. So they were speaking to her, and then I walked in. Salam alaikum. <laughs> when she saw me, then uh, she she got a little bit upset. If funny, uh, so we lied the sister down and we started making the recitation. And this time, whilst I was making the recitation, I had her brothers uh, and her sons just poking her gently, gentle persuasion, like we called it in the last video, just giving some gentle persuasion and 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 putting some scent near her nose, etc. And they hated, she hated all of this. But now, Ikhwani, before she was very, you know, she just wanted to talk. Now she started getting violent. Now she started getting violent. This young sister, sorry, this uh, little sister, she's not big in stature. And um, there was like three or four of the brothers holding her down and she was, you know, able to get up and, and, and her, you know, she, she became extremely, extremely strong um, and she was trying to bite her. So she was literally like, if you, if you had her arm, she was trying to take chunks out of your arm with her teeth. So she'd literally try and bite down on you. Um, imagine like a dog is trying to bite on you. And, and, and at this stage, Rifat was saying, I'm going to eat you all. I found that quite funny. Uh, Rifat this, this was was telling us those brothers in the room, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get you all, and I'm going to eat you all. So I said, Rifat Bismillah, start with me, please. Uh, you know, and 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 you can start with me and, and try and eat me. Well, alhamdulillah, you put your trust in Allah. Before you say these things, obviously, um, you don't want to become arrogant and haughty. You first put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You say your adkar, um, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. Uh, you make all of these a different adhkar and then you say to the jinn right now jinn bismillah leave her and enter into me and you put your trust in Allah with full faith that you've made all of your adhkar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you this is a way of uh, tormenting the jinn mocking the jinn that look you you have entered into this person but you don't have the ability Allah has not given you the power Allah is our protector and Allah is our helper and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to destroy you it's a way of making them feel helpless and powerless it's a way of like debilitate, debilitating them it's a way of affecting their morale all of these different things so Rifat was trying to eat us take big chunks out of us and we again like the previous brother in the last video or the video before we gave Rifa a good hard beating again we gave the jinn a beating we didn't harm the sister in any way shape or form until walhamdulillah Rifa said oh, okay leave me alone you guys are just too much you're torturing me now you're going to kill me now I just want to go and I'm not going to come back here you guys are just too much and I said to Rifa look and she was and she was saying all these different things I said Rifa look shut up Rifa shut up and you have to be sometimes you have to be firm with them I said look who are you and, and Rifat was saying oh, I want to sit up and I want to sit on the bed I want to do this I want to do that I said Rifat shut your mouth this isn't your house this is not your house you do not have any authority in this house you do not have the right to be in this house you do not have the right to be in this sister who are you to be giving orders who are you to be giving us orders when this is their house and you are trying to give us orders and you really have to make that jinn feel small put that jinn in its place again not because we hate the jinn as, as, as a creation of Allah but because this particular jinn is a mischievous jinn and is causing problems and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَا shaytan I won't give you the translation of that I'll leave that to you brothers and sisters to go and, and, and find out about the saying of Allah فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَا shaytan so we have to be very stern with them because we hate them for the sake of Allah because they are ruining this person's life they will try and get them to commit suicide, they will drive them insane, they will give them headaches, they will give them body aches, they will give them back, shoulder aches, leg aches, all of these different issues, if only they make this person's life a misery. So for that, we hate them because they are oppressing this person and we as Muslims, we dislike and we hate the oppressors for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we gave Rifa a good, uh, a good beating and we were there for a while um, and alhamdulillah towards the end, uh, Rifa said, um, you know this is the situation um i'm going now leave me alone and rifat was trying to leave through the mouth so rifat was saying give me something i want to uh, i want to vomit i want to vomit give me something i want to vomit and and I'll, i want to leave through the mouth and i said listen who are you to say where you want to leave from 
if you leave through her mouth, you might cause damage to her throat. Because if one, uh, another piece of advice to your brothers and sisters, if the jinn wants to leave through the mouth or the nose, try and get them to leave through a different part of the body. Because if they leave through the mouth, then they can damage the throat on the way out. Imagine if you know you have something, uh, you know, like uh, there's something big and it's inside something small, and you're trying to pull it out as much as you can. You you have to expand and stretch that small thing to get the big thing out of it. So it's like they are inside the body, and if you have to pull them out, you know, it's it's a difficult thing, and we don't want any lasting damage to be done to the sister's throat or her nose or her mouth or her ears. So I said, listen, you need to leave through her arm, leave through that window and don't you dare come back because if you come back, I said, we're going to have a marathon session with you. We're going to, you know, I was only there for like one hour, one and a half hours, two hours at a time. I said, listen, if you come back, frankly, we're going to have a marathon session with you and I'm just going to come and I'm going to bring my pillow and I'm going to bring my duvet and I'm going to lie here and I'm just going to recite and recite and recite until you die and I'm not going to stop. So Ikhwani, Alhamdulillah, Rifat left. Um, an interesting thing, Ikhwani, like I said in the previous video, sometimes you're dealing with a case which you think is just jinn and it turns out that there's magic as well. Um, recently, um, I was contacted by this family and they told me that, subhanAllah, there's, um, there's, there's, we found Daviz in the house, we found amulets in the house. So it seems that somebody did magic and Rifat came with the magic. Rifat came with the magic and this is why she's causing the issues. The, uh, the Daviz that we found it will be displayed on the screen over my shoulder now insha'Allah and you'll be able to see, as you can see Ikhwani, this Taviz is full of uh, it's full of grids, it's full of random letters, it's full of random shapes um, it's full of Arabic and, and other random writing which we can't read Ikhwani, this Taviz is no doubt from a magician and this is no doubt magic which somebody has planted in this house uh, so what we did was we put the magic in water, we put the, the Taviz in water, there was two of these we put the Daviz in water, causing the ink to run, and then, uh, Subhanallah, we um, we uh, whatever I could fit down the drain, I you know we, we, we put it down the drain. But Subhanallah, if only the rest of it we tried to burn. Now I want you to imagine this. If only I'm holding this piece of paper, and it's just a piece of paper, and we all know that if you burn paper, it burns very very quickly. Paper burns very very quickly. If only this Daviz. They poured petrol on it. They put it in a plastic bag and poured petrol on it. And they burnt it. Everything burnt but the Daviz didn't burn. SubhanAllah. Look at this, Ikhwani. This piece of paper, seemingly just a normal paper. You put petrol on it, you burn it and it doesn't burn. You put petrol on the plastic bag, you put the Daviz in the bag and you burn it and it doesn't burn. So Ikhwani, SubhanAllah, this is no doubt um, uh, magic. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. So then what we did was uh, we uh, put the uh, Daviz into some running water into a stream and we let this uh, stream take the Daviz away. Ikhwani some points of benefit from this particular case and maybe some uh, points of benef benefit from some other cases as well. The first thing Ikhwani is that it seems that uh, from, from the incident on WhatsApp um, you know the jinn was trying to confuse me saying oh there's who are you talking about? It's me. You're a fool. You're confused. You're this. You're that. To try and confuse me. To try and confuse me. But it, it gave me enough of a glimpse that I knew that this isn't that person. So if only when you come across a person and you know, my wife doesn't behave like this. My wife and I, we get on so well. But now, subhanAllah, you know, now she, when, she, when she gets angry, she curses and she swears and she says this and she says that. This is out of character for my wife. If only have faith in your own judgment. Because the shaitan will try and come to you and he will try and you know, confuse you. But have faith in your own judgment. You know yourself, you know your spouse better than anybody except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So trust your judgment. If you know that this is not your spouse, you know what, that didn't sound like my wife. We shouldn't be suspicious, we shouldn't jump to conclusions. But at the same time, we should also uh, you know, be confident in our own judgment. So I was confident in my own judgment. I know this person, I know the way this person speaks. You've given me enough of a glimpse of yourself, O Jin, and now you're trying to play games and make me think uh, that you know what? Mm, maybe, uh, maybe I go too far with these jinn. Maybe you know it's it's not jinn, and I'm just it's in my own mind. But I stuck to my guns and I addressed the jinn directly, and eventually the jinn it came up and and we had a good conversation. Alhamdulillah. An interesting point, and I want to mention this. I was speaking to a jinn 
a previous time over WhatsApp. Allahu alam, they just like WhatsApp maybe because it's free. So I was speaking to the to the jinn via WhatsApp, and I was reminding the jinn about the grave and the death. And I said to him, the grave is going to crush your bones. The grave is going to crush your bones. And Subhanallah, Allah knows best about the authenticity of what the jinn then said next to me. But he said to me, we don't have bones, you idiot. So I said to him, the grave when it when it crushes you is gonna crush your bones. And he said to me, you fool, we don't have bones. Allahu alim, Allah knows best. But I just wanted to share that with you because some of them are quite clever, they're quite quirky, they're quite cheeky. But you know what? You need to stick to your guns and 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 don't you know listen to any of their tricks. Another point of benefit is that um, many a time, you know, when it's a Muslim jinn, I would advise you, brothers and sisters, if it's a Muslim jinn. Be kind, be gentle with them, and this is a way to try and get them to leave. You know, just be gentle with them and just tell them, look, you need to go, you need to go. When we burnt the Taviz, uh, the amulets, and, and we, when we destroyed them, the sister who was afflicted, she got a very bad headache. She felt burning in her arms and in her hands. She felt very sick. But Alhamdulillah, it seems that she's okay. But Allahu Alam, this is, I'm still classing this as an ongoing case because I'm still not 100% are happy that this sister has been cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, ikhwani, stay away from these Ouija boards, all of this evil and all of this haram. Um, if you brothers and sisters have any questions on anything that you hear in these videos, any uh, useful comments, anything that I've missed out, advise me inshallah. If there's any issues that you particular brothers or sisters, uh, your brothers and sisters want addressing in particular, then I'll do my best inshallah. Um, to, to address them if I can't do my you know if I if I'm not able to address them if they're over me and um, then I'll get somebody who's more knowledgeable or a better Raqi than I am and I'll consult with them inshallah and and we can try and benefit uh, please give us some feedback on these videos inshallah and um, so that we can improve um, as you know in the in the in this video we showed you a Taviz um, you know everybody knows about the evil of these Taviz but we don't want a big debate to spark up about the Taviz now we're really talking about Rukya, etc., etc. Um, please, if there if there are any questions or comments about Taviz, etc., uh, take it to another place. Um, Brother Muhammad Tim Humble has done a very, very good uh, piece on Taviz. Uh, it's a video, and he's also uh, he's also done some writing. Um, but if there's any other questions or comments or queries or worries um, or anything like that, then please leave them in the comment section or, or drop drop us a message on the Facebook page. Um, and, and, and also make dua for the Muslims who are suffering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures them uh, protect yourselves uh, take precautions uh, you know maybe if, if you people your brothers and sisters want a video on on how to protect yourself on the things that we should be reciting what time to recite them how to recite them etc maybe we can do that but please give us some feedback uh, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh